Here in Melbourne Airport about to board, getting ready for an incredible tour across Canada and the United States. Let's do this. The sacraments are deeply connected with our lives. For example, baptism is the door to the spiritual life, while through reconciliation we are restored back into our spiritual walk. Through the Eucharist we are nourished as we continue our journey and our spiritual walk. Through marriage and holy orders we focus our spiritual life to a particular purpose. And through the anointing of the sick we are healed and embraced as we journey on towards God. What about the sacrament of confirmation? Through this sacrament we are strengthened, encouraged and confirmed in our Christian walk. The faith given to us in baptism is there made strong as the apostles were confirmed and empowered by the Holy Spirit at the day of Pentecost. They were given the courage to practice their faith and showered with supernatural gifts. The Holy Spirit empowers and confirms you and I during the sacrament of confirmation and gives us the very same gifts that were given to the Apostles. If you want to know more about the Holy Spirit, click on the link below in the video description. When the Bishop anoints us and lays his hands over us asking for the Holy Spirit, we receive these awesome gifts. Traditionally, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are wisdom, understanding, counsel and courage, knowledge and piety, and fear of the Lord. Good. Very good. Just a couple of minutes before we go on stage for an amazing concert. It's amazing that no matter how often I do this, I still get scared every time. But reflecting on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we have wisdom. Wisdom is not about being intelligent, but it's about seeing things from a new perspective, seeing things from a higher perspective, and that is the perspective of God. Seeing the world through the eyes of God is like a little child who's walking through a busy marketplace or somewhere in the city and decides to lift up their arms and ask mom to pick them up. While before the perspective was simply of just legs of people walking left and right, all of a sudden their, their perspective is, is a new perspective and that's the perspective of mom. Seeing the world through the eyes of mom where she feels secure strengthened, confident, and there's just a higher, more awesome perspective. This is what wisdom is. It's about standing on the shoulders of God, walking in the arms, embraced by God. And there, not only do we gain a higher perspective, but we gain a surer perspective, a truer perspective. <laughs> understanding. That is not simply knowing random facts and interesting things, but simply knowing the deeper things of the heart of God. Understanding is the gift through which we can break into the very core of revealed truths. For example, the Trinity. This does not mean that we can understand these truths fully, but we can still understand with a sense of certainty. Through understanding we see the world and our life within it in the larger context of eternity and in the context of God. Then there is the gift of counsel. Now, counsel is the perfection of the virtue of prudence. Counsel goes beyond prudence. It's a sort of a supernatural intuition that allows us to respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. It builds on wisdom, allowing us to judge things from a higher perspective, that is from the perspective of eternity, 
or the perspective of the eyes of God himself. Counsel is the Holy Spirit speaking to the heart of a person and instantly inspiring the person to make right judgment. Judgment that will benefit the glory of God and also the salvation of the person making the judgment and the salvation of others. This is what happened to me when I was on The X Factor. Three weeks into the show, I decided to leave the show, even though it was quite successful for me to be there. Right at a moment, at an instant, I had that, this recognition, this understanding that this is not what I'm called to do. This is not where I am meant to be. I'm grateful for that opportunity, but I'm also grateful for the strength I had to respond to that gift of counsel. The next gift is the gift of fortitude or courage, which is very different to what many of us understand courage to be today. The gift of courage is reasoned and reasonable. The person who is exercising courage is willing and ready to put themselves in danger but does not seek out danger for danger itself. Mm -hmm. Fortitude is a virtue that allows us to overcome fear in the face of obstacles and danger. Prudence and justice are the virtues by which we figure out what needs to be done, while fortitude gives us the strength and the courage to do it. Fortitude is not about foolishly putting your life in danger, even though sometimes it is necessary in order to stand up for what is right and in order to protect our hearts, our minds and our souls. Fortitude is the virtue of the martyrs who are ready to lay down their lives rather than renounce the faith. It is also the virtue of those who are ready to stand up for what is right, even if it means for themselves to be put down. It is the virtue that allows us to cope with poverty and loss and sickness and death and also use those things to draw us closer to God. And then there is the gift of knowledge. The gift of knowledge is judging circumstances according to the mind and the will of God. Through the gift of knowledge we can ascertain the purpose of God's will in our life. Why he allows us to go through certain things and allow certain circumstances to happen. This gift allows people to discern between impulses of temptation and inspirations of God's grace. Piety is the perfection of religion. Through our relationship with God, which I will link a video below if you'd like to know more about that, this allows us to give God his worth, what he deserves. King David in the book of Psalms says, Not to us, not to us, but to your name, O Lord, be all the glory. This is a gift I, I hope and I, I strive to use because with all my life, with my words and my actions and my performances and my celebration of the sacraments, this is my desire, not to make myself famous or no, but in a sense to make the name of God famous, to make God known to the ends of the earth. So this is the moral virtue by which a person is disposed to give glory and honor to God. The fear of the Lord is not what some might think as being afraid of God. You see, there's nothing to be afraid of when it comes to the Lord. He loves us and He looks at us with love. But this fear is a fear of offending God, doing everything you can in every situation to honor God and not to offend His heart of love for us. God will give us the strength not to do that. Fear of the Lord is like not wanting to offend someone you love, maybe your parents or your spouse. You don't fear them, but yet you don't want to offend them. It is not a fear of punishment, but a desire not to offend God. Through confirmation, all these gifts are yours. So discover them and use them. <laughs>